Hello, my name is Matt. I donated a kidney to a stranger. I work in the field of kidney transplantation, um, so I'm always around stories of donors and recipients. And, uh, you know, it hits pretty hard when you hear about some patients that, uh, you know, just kind of suffer through these kind of problems. And I felt like donating a kidney was going to be my way to, uh, you know, do my part in believing that for someone. I was motivated to donate a kidney uh, because uh, in my daughter's mother's family, there's a history of polycystic kidney disease. My daughter's mother's mother, my daughter's grandmother, my daughter's great grandfather, my daughter's uncle, my daughter's aunt all have polycystic kidney disease. Uh, a few of them have gotten transplants. Uh, unfortunately, her great grandfather passed away from polycystic kidney disease without getting a transplant. Um, you know, and he was kind of stuck on dialysis. You know, so I had the opportunity to donate a kidney and start a chain of uh, kidney donations. Um, as part of the advanced donation program through the National Kidney Registry. When I started to research living donation, uh, the most surprising thing I learned was that there are so many people that uh, need a transplant. As far as the actual donation process, some of the things that I was most surprised about were the uh, lack of long-term follow-up uh, information on, on donors uh, for risks. You know, the hospitals feel like, uh, you know, it's safe and, and everything, but there's really not a whole lot of long-term studies. So uh, one of the things that I'm trying to work on is uh, putting together some more uh, studies on the long-term outcomes of kidney donors. And uh, hopefully we can, you know, work with some of the uh, researchers in that field and put something together and um, do some long-term uh, follow-up. I had a, a handful of private and personal field fears um, about the process. Uh, one of the biggest ones was, you know, what if I don't wake up? Um, you know, because there, there is that risk. I think it's uh, one in 3,000 or, or three in 10,000. It's a low risk, but, you know, that is a possibility. Um, some other minor things that I was a little concerned about was, you know, would I still be able to run? You know, would I still be able to, you know, pick up my kid? You know, stuff like that. And uh, it turns out that, you know, <laughs> while the risks are very low, um, you know, the other items are, you know, you're pretty much, you're, you're cleared within a, a few weeks of, of getting back to uh, work. I was at peace with my decision um, from the moment I decided to, to do it. Um, I'm not the kind of person that dwells on things or, or has regrets, you know, or, or, or just harps on something. Uh, you know, once I make up my mind to do something, that's what I'm going to do. So I was uh, I was at peace throughout the whole process. Um, you know, my only concerns again were just the uh, you know what if I don't wake up. Uh, so I had a lot of different sources of information that helped me learn and helped me stay informed. I mean, again, I, I work for the National Kidney Registry, uh, so I have you know the resources of many transplant centers that I get to work with. Um, but you know, that's from the medical center point of view. Um, what I found most helpful actually was talking to other donors who have donated a kidney. Um, you know, and it's, uh, I think it's important that these donors tell their stories and get it out there so that people have, you know, this information available to them. I also think it's important that uh, donors make themselves available if uh, another kidney donor steps forward and wants to donate but is nervous or has questions or is overly excited. You know, you kind of want to make sure that they fully know what they're getting into before they do it. So the best support system I had uh, was number one, my wife. I mean, she was there for everything. She supported me. Uh, she she took on a lot of the stress. Uh, she handled a lot of the arrangements. Um, you know, paid taxi drivers, whatever. You know, so I didn't have to do anything other than you know go to surgery. Um, you know, she helped me get out of bed uh, after surgery so that I can walk. She uh, made sure that I ate healthy afterwards. Uh, she made sure that I was drinking enough water. You know, she was a, she was a rock star, um, you know, and then to add to that, I was fortunate enough to be able to stay at my sister-in-law's house. Uh, she's an emergency room nurse, so I had uh, really good care um, while I was there uh, continuing my recovery. Uh, and also my, uh, my sister, she came up from Florida, um, you know, all the way to New York to uh, support me and to help take care of me. She visited me. She uh, stayed in the hospital and kept me company so that my uh, darling wife could, you know, go out and get a five-minute break or whatever it took. So I appreciate all, uh, all of them. Uh, 
you know, for their support through this. And, you know, lastly, I just want to thank my boss, Garrett, for giving me the time off uh, and for giving me a lot of advice on, you know, how to take care of the pain that comes with uh, surgery. Um, and, you know, and a couple of other tips to, uh, you know, keep me square. In total, the uh, surgery took about an hour and a half to complete. Uh, I was in the hospital for two days uh, until I was released. The best moment after my surgery was uh, waking up and seeing my wife and knowing that everything went well. Um, you know, a couple hours after that, I was uh, after the anesthesia like completely wore off. I was I was out of bed and walking. Um, and I think uh, if I had to say the second best moment, I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit. And uh, the second best moment was getting out of bed and doing all that walking uh, as soon as possible. I mean, immediately. I mean, within four hours of the surgery, I was up walking. Uh, and I think that was the reason why I had a, a relatively pain-free uh, recovery. So while I was recovering at home, I was able to manage my responsibilities by uh, working off of my phone. Uh, also, I had a lot of help from my wife. Uh, eventually, uh, I set up the laptop, which uh, I got yelled at. I was told uh, not to work. But, you know, you're sitting there all day with uh, only three things you're allowed to do. And one of them is eat. The other one is walk. And uh, the third one is work. So that's what I did. I worked. I, uh, I walked between three and ten miles a day. I uh, slept. I ate. And I worked. And uh, it was it was fun, and I enjoyed that that time to rest at home, um, kind of be very flexible with when I worked. It was uh, it was kind of nice. I almost wish I could donate another kidney to have uh, another couple of easy weeks of work. So I was back to my normal self uh, about three weeks after surgery. You know, work wise, you know, I have a uh, mostly a desk job, so. Uh, working, I you know, from the hospital bed, I was on my phone working, uh, getting yelled at by my wife in one ear while I'm answering emails <laughs> with, with my hands. Um, so I don't know, you know, when you say get back to normal, I guess when, when everything, when, when I don't realize that, like, I just donated a kidney, it was probably between three and six weeks. That's when, uh, you know, it stopped. You know, I, I, I wasn't so cautious getting out of bed. Um, you know, I wasn't as concerned about you know, bumping into things or whatever the case is. Uh, so I guess that's about when I was my normal self again. So after donating a kidney, my health is really uh, no different. Um, one of the things, though, that changed mildly was I do drink a lot more water than I used to. Um, you know, I enjoyed my tea, my soda, <laughs> which, you know, I try to avoid those things now because I just want to be a little more cautious. The best advice I can give you if you do do it is walk walk as much as possible get out of that bed don't lay there just get out walk as you know if you can only walk 10 feet walk 10 feet go lay back down but the more you walk uh the more uh, the less the pain uh you'll have uh, i'm 100 percent convinced that i was pain free after you know two or three days because i walked that's all i did is i walked and i worked <laughs> uh my, my work again desk job nice and easy but um you know, I walked, and that was the, the best advice I can give you if you do do it.